Hello everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day. If all goes well, we are going to turn this into this in one video. Let's get started. All right, so before I tell you about the computers themselves, I want to tell you about the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com. They supplied this board months ago, and without this board, these computers would still be in pieces like this. The fact is, they had old spinning hard drives like this, SCSI hard drives at that, 50-pin SCSIs, and uh, this one no longer worked, and the other one has some irreplaceable software, and so I was just absolutely up a creek. But thanks to PCBWay, I was able able to get uh, a bunch of these boards and you can get them for five bucks plus some cheap shipping delivered to your door and for less than the cost of buying one of these things off eBay I was able to get 10 of them and so um, you can save a lot of computers and save a lot of money by getting your boards through PCB way and I've said it over and over and over again without PCB way things like this would not be possible because they bring these things to us at an affordable price they also sponsor a lot of your favorite youtubers so that we can give you the information that you need to fix these things on your own. So thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring this video and check out the links in the description. So the two Macintosh SEs that I have here are slightly different and both had their own problems. This is the one with the writing all over it and uh, this one I had looked at it for a while. It was in my friend's storage unit and uh, it just looked like absolute trash. Um, and so he wound up giving it to me. Maybe I paid 20 bucks, somewhere in that range. But when I got home, it turned out that just the little um, yoke had fallen off the monitor and the actual computer was fine, but this is the hard drive and it was absolute trash. So without that, the computer was pretty much useless. Uh, this one over here I got, and it actually had this very, very weird accelerator board on it. And it has a Motorola, what is it, 68030. Um, so a very fast processor for something like this and uh, had some extra RAM on it and this extra socket on the bottom and stuff like that. But this one just gave me a sad Mac face. Now, in all the tearing around and messing around building this video, um, I figured out that I think the problem was that somebody installed this with four gigs of RAM in it um, and didn't flip this little jumper over here. So therefore, uh, the Mac just freaked out and didn't work. So that was actually how I was able to get this one to boot. But again, um, um, no hard drive. Now this one actually did have a hard drive, but the hard drive had special software on here for making this board work. And uh, I'm going to get into that in another video, but I did not want to take a chance of that drive not working until I was able to fully back it up and, you know, even share that software with the world. And so um, as far as I was concerned, I did not want this hard drive to run. And so we're going to set this aside uh, because we're going to concentrate on getting the storage working and then we're going to get these computers together so the blue scuzzy i'm going to be honest with you was the bane of my existence um i put board after board together and had all kinds of fits i had magic smoke come out of one of them um and i generally just couldn't get them working so um i did figure it out over time and i even after watching every video and reading every document there were just things that just were not working for me so we're going to go over some of that stuff uh first of all i'll solder one together and show you how that goes and then I'm going to show you the software process and then we're going to talk a little bit about the SD cards. All right, soldering the blue SCSI. Um, these things are a little bit fiddly. Uh, so I'm going to start off with the uh, SD card because if you don't get that right, nothing else really matters. And uh, I'm also going to switch away from my normal rosin core flux to some silver bearing solder. And uh, it's a little more expensive, but it is stronger. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start just by tacking these top pins in place. And there isn't much to solder onto on these pins. So we kind of got to get everything in place and heat it up and kind of hope for the best. I'm not used to looking at my soldering projects from this much of an angle, so it's a little awkward. Uh, but we're going to get that up there like that and just get it to hold a little bit. And I can see that I'm a little far forward over here. So I'm going to heat it up again and slide it back. Now, obviously, that's not held on there very well at this point. 
but I want to make sure that the pins are aligned and so far they look pretty good. So I'm going to put some more pressure on this side and heat up the flux that, or the uh, solder that's already on there. And just see if we can get that connected. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I didn't add solder on here in advance because it's really easy for this thing to lift the, the card up in the air and that just gets annoying. So you kind of have to, I fluxed it in advance, but we have to uh, kind of get some solder on the end of that and heat it up and just let it stick and then give it some time to cool even though I'm burning my finger. And I'm going to come and do the opposite pad now. I'm probably going to add a little solder there. Now again, you can get so much solder in these things that it will actually flow inside the socket. And that's not what you want because that's going to get in the way of the uh, of the card. There's not a lot of play in these things. Alright, so now I'm going to inspect that and make sure that all those are really touching. It looks like they are, but I'm going to get a better look at that. It looks like I've got a double joint there, so I want to try to fill that in a little bit. Um, but there is a hole right here, so I want to be careful not to put so much solder that I fill that hole in. Now I'm actually going to add a little bit more liquid flux here to this one. And by a little, I mean a lot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this iron ripping hot and I'm going to, I'm going to go back to silver solder again. And I'm going to put a blob on the end of this thing. See, I've got a chisel tip there, so it makes it a little bit easier for this operation. But I've got a nice good blob on that. And I'm going to heat it up. I'm going to start dragging my way down there. And the first step, I'm just kind of burning the flux off maybe tinning a little bit. So I'm going to add another blob on there. <coughs> I think I've got a little bridge there at the end, but um, I'm going to get that under the camera and I'm going to inspect it and see how it looks. All right. So it looked at first like I had a bridge there. I actually didn't. Um, I went ahead and cleaned it up anyway, but I didn't have a bridge, so no harm, no foul. I've got some uh, 330 ohm uh, resistor networks, and we're going to need two of those for this thing. Now, these things are, I guess you'd call polarized. They have a dot on them, and uh, that dot is going to go toward the square. Um, so over here, if you look at this, these are 330 ohm. And this thing's got a dot right there. So that dot on the 330 ohm is going to go over here toward the square. And the same thing on this one, the dot goes to the square. And then we're just going to solder those in. And we're going to do the same thing with these 220 ohm resistors. Now I've had a couple of issues doing these things in the past. And so um, what I'm doing, I'm going to use female header pins. I have this kit that I got in a previous mailbag. These things are um, actually sized for the job, which means I'm not cutting the end off of one. And this will allow me to remove the STM32 if I need to. I probably should have some kind of holder here. I've got a pair of pliers. I'll just set that right there. That'll be fine. And now we're going to put one of these 50 pin SCSI headers on. All right. So we've got a couple of diodes here. Um, if I remember correctly, these are a pretty tight fit, um, but the line on the diode goes toward the um, SD card. So we're going to put those in here. Yeah, that's a pretty tight fit, but it does fit. Um, so we're going to get that shoved in there and then we're going to solder that. And then we're going to also add some more header pins for some jumpers and things like that. So I'm going to get that kind of in there like that. And then I've got these uh, Nipix pliers I'm just going to use to pull the thing through and get it as close down as I can. Last but not least, we are going to solder on some resistors and it does uh, need some pretty small resistors. I wouldn't recommend using quarter watt. These are sixth watt. They actually recommend using eighth watt in there. Um, 
but it's a relatively tight fit, small footprint to get these things in here. So uh, this whole part is optional. I'm going to do it, but you can see even a sixth watt resistor is fairly tight on that footprint. In fact, you can do the thing where you sort of raise one leg up. I forgot to mention that I am going to put some uh, SCSI termination jumpers right on here. Um, may take them off in the future if I have more than one drive, but for now I'm going to go ahead and put these termination jumpers on. I also should mention that this is normally a floppy drive connector, which has a little bit bigger pins on it, but uh, for my purposes this will be perfectly fine. All right, so I've got uh, an STM32 here, and uh, this thing was actually a bit of a pain in the butt to solder. Um, but I'm going to put the STM32 in here. So we've got the uh, USB on the left. We've got the SD card on the right um, for reference. Now, this one has the bootloader installed on it from the factory. So when I plug this in, uh, you get a fast flashing light there. We're not going to do that right now. We're going to just follow the instructions. Okay, so we've got our ST-Link here, and uh, we only need these bottom four pins when you're looking at it this way. We need these four. And uh, so the first one over here is clock, which is blue on my wires. So we're going to connect that to the clock. Then we've got, um, let's go to ground, which is the third one, which is green. So we're going to do ground up here. And then we've got 3.3 volts, which is, let's see, 3.3 volts is white on mine. So we're going to do the white, just kind of doing process of elimination, make sure I get the other one right. And uh, purple is going to be the one that's left over. So once we get all that connected, then we're going to hook the ST-Link up to the computer, uh, which I've got my pluggable thing over here that I'm going to grab a little extension cable for and plug it in. Okay, so programming this thing seems a little bit wonky. Um, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through how I do it. I've got the ST links uh, hooked up but not plugged in. I'm going to double click this flash win and then I'm going to select option two. And then I'm going to move the jumper that is not right next to the, uh, to the reset button. I'm going to move that jumper over to the right. Uh, one space and then I'm going to plug in the ST link into the computer. You'll hear the beep Now I'm going to press the space bar And everything looks good there now. I'm going to put that jumper back that I just moved and um, I'm going to unplug the ST link from the computer and uh, then I'm going to press the space bar again. And it's going to tell me to move the other jumper over to the right. So I'm going to do that. All right, so this is the part that always tripped me up. I'm going to plug a micro USB cable into the actual blue pill itself. If it doesn't do anything there like it just did, you may actually have to hit the space bar on the computer. Um, I've sat there forever waiting for something to happen, and it didn't, so hitting the space bar just made that happen magically. I'm going to put the other jumper back, disconnect the USB, and I am good to go. All right, so you've got a lot you can learn from old people. Um, once you get one of these things up and running and tested go ahead and do yourself a favor and put a check mark on the sd card or something like that just so you know um, that this one is good to go the next thing is um, we're going to adapt this down to the standard three and a half inch uh, drive power connector and for that you want the red wire to go toward the sd card and uh, you know things go wrong sometimes you get busy and uh, you can get to plugging things in and out and all that kind of stuff. And so what you want to do is put a little bit of hot glue there. Not enough that it'll never come off or anything like that. But just enough so that um, to remind you, one, to unplug it by this side. And two, just to make sure that it never gets unplugged to where you plug it in the wrong way. Because if you do it the other way, then you've got, instead of putting 5 volts here, putting tw uh, 12 volts here. And you're going to kill the entire thing. All right, so my wife printed out this little uh, bracket for me. We just got this uh, new Elegoo 3D printer. I got a little bit of work to do to get some of these lines away and stuff like that. But overall, I think it looks really good um, and feels really strong. So uh, we're going to do a couple different things. We are going to drill a couple of holes in this. I've got a 7 ths drill bit right here. We're just going to chase that out a little bit so that we can thread in an M3 screw. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do 
is chuck in a 1 8 and we're just going to go ahead and drill through the bottom of these holes so that we can use through bolts um, just because I think that's a lot easier than trying to thread screws into this thing and uh, you know you're going to be pushing on it and stuff like that so all right so we got a 1 8 inch hole 1 8 inch hole now you could use metric on these through holes here. Uh, for me, I found that I had number four screws and so that worked out pretty well. Um, so I'm gonna get some screws and we'll get started. I had to get a little bit of the glue off on that side to make the thing uh, sit flush. So I didn't know that I was actually gonna print this thing when I added that glue, all good now. So uh, we're gonna drop these in. I think I decided I'm gonna go with the 5 8 inch screws. Uh, but we're going to drop that one in. They're not magnetic, so that's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it'll work. All right, so on one of the computers, uh, this thing comes off, but on this one, it doesn't. This is actually tack welded on here. This is the older one. Uh, so the newer SEs, this comes off the older one. It doesn't. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a trick to do this on camera, so I may cut away, but I'm going to show you the idea. Uh, so what we're going to do with this is we're going to stick it through here like this. And I want this cable on first because it is a bit of a pain to put that on after uh, asking me how I know. And so we're going to line this up and we're going to thread this thing through here, uh, through these little holes. And then we're going to put a washer on the back and a nut and tighten it down that way. Now, I didn't think there was any way this stock cable was going to fit, but it looks like it might. I can sort of pivot it around here. You can see I went through this power cable and uh, come over here and I'm going to brace it. Obviously, I'm not going to put all that tension on that PLA, but I think we got it with the stock cable. Now I just gotta find what I did with the power cable. Uh, oh, it's under here somewhere. Man, I think this is gonna fit with stock cables. That's amazing. All right, this is not any kind of YouTube recreation. This is the actual first time that I try to fully boot uh, this Macintosh SE. Let's see what happens. All right, we got a beep, so the speaker's working. Screen's coming on. We get a mouse, we got a mouse, the mouse moves. We got a Happy Mac, Happy Mac. Welcome to Macintosh. I've never seen this computer fully boot up. We got something there, I was looking for a network card and we've got system, uh, whatever they call it, 6.08 with a two gigabyte drive on a Mac that was built in 1987. Uh, now this only has one meg of RAM in it, so uh, it actually runs okay. So we've got system 6.0.8, um, Apple Share, Apple Talk, Color, <laughs> Color, that's funny, um, DA Handler, whatever all that kind of stuff is here. Uh, I don't know if there's any games or anything like that on there. We got some system 6.0 extras. And uh, yeah, okay, we've got a happy Mac and a happy Dan. Um, now, because this thing was gifted to me, I'm actually going to be gifting it to someone else. So thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this and making it to where I could be generous after someone was generous with me.